welcome back to Inside Africa. In many parts of Ghana, fishing drives the economy and dictates the diet. But for generations, it's also served as a hub for child slavery. A practice unthinkable to most has been acceptable to a few fishermen, desperate to cash in on the day's catch. But a former child slave is fighting back. For him, ending an age-old tradition begins with a new school of thought. Years later, the memories remain. As he struggled, the, the tones had to be moved with my flesh coming out. And, and it came with my flesh. I would say that I'm at 60% healed. Do you have any physical scars? Yeah, of that, yes. It's still there. That thing is still there. I can't show you. James Kofi Annan is a former child slave, but one that is charging ahead turning what would be a crippling experience for many into a drive to stamp out child trafficking. To do that, he quit his promising job at Barclays Bank and opened Challenging Heights School. Every child must go to school, and that is what I believe must happen, that nobody is free until every child has received at least a good basic education. You are free because you are educated. And I'm free because I'm educated. His school takes in former child slaves like this teenager we'll call Thomas. His voice painfully soft, perhaps a result of abuse James tells us that he endured for two-thirds of his life. But now James is trying to lift Thomas and other kids up and out from situations like this. Either parents selling their children to fishermen to wrangle fishing nets 17 hours a day, or unknowingly sending their kids to apprentice with a relative to learn a skill, a practice common in Ghana, only to have their children caught in slave labor. And it's people like this that make it happen. Benjamin Tornier bought kids from parents and used them on his fishing boat. He calls himself a former trafficker now. I said, Yes, yes. Uh, I, I, I normally employ them to dive into the net when there's any problem that involves maybe uh, a blockage of the net down there, they need to go and free it. Uh, exactly what I ask them to do when it comes necessary. He bought 10 children, he says, in the time he was a fisherman, which could have earned him a healthy income of about 2,500 U.S. dollars, well above the typical rural income. The math favors traffickers. The parent sells the child for 50 U.S. dollars, then the trafficker sells or leases the child for about 300 dollars, making 250 a year per child. Cold, but profitable arbitrage. For all fishermen, it is all about dollar and cents, getting the product to market at the cheapest possible cost. In debate is the means to those ends. Fishermen bring their catch here each and every day to try to sell this to distributors and customers that come in off the street. Now, some of their catch is actually much smaller, fish like this, caught in small, fine nets. They cost about five U.S. cents each. And what fishermen are saying is, without child labor, this would cost more, therefore endangering their livelihood. Slave-owning fishermen argue nets are easily damaged, have small holes, and catch small fish. They believe little fingers and small bodies are the best to deal with those challenges, whether underwater or on land. They can fit 10 kids on a boat where only five adults would stand. And as James laments... The net is more expensive than the human being. So buying kids just makes sense, slave owners say. But how then do they explain Joshua, another child James Annan has saved? Joshua shows us where he was hit depending on his so-called mistakes. In the side of his body, because he could not dive as deep as 20 meters. In the head, for throwing nets the wrong way. James shows us this picture of Joshua's crooked body when he first arrived at Challenging Heights. Such images are not unseen, though, by the government. Estelle Apia has been writing laws dealing with children for 15 years at the Ministry of Justice in Ghana. She addresses one possible solution. If you eliminate the nets that have such small holes uh, and make them larger or use different techno technologies and applications mm -hmm. of fishing, mm -hmm. uh, that might alleviate the problem. So has there been debate about uh, that? Oh, indeed there has. We what, have, we give have, us we some have, background. Yes, yes, yes. Well, we have just finished drafting f new fishery regulations, actually, that apart from other things uh, deal with net sizes and pair trawling. 
and the use of dynamite for fishing. That law not yet passed, though. Instead, APIA says, look at the two laws passed in the last five years dealing with child trafficking. They represent progress legislatively that meet international conventions. But her experience also makes her pragmatic. Enacting legislation is not a panacea. You also have to educate people that the laws are there to protect them. And you have to give them reasons and you have to try and alleviate poverty, which is the root cause oftentimes of child trafficking. So the law itself is not, is not going to cure the situation. That's why James built his school right in the middle of an area known for children being sold by their parents. The school acts as an alternative, a defense, and a refuge for his offense, going out to buy children back, then educating them. At any time, his school has several dozen former child slaves mixed in with 300 other students. He mainstreams, he says, because he believes that's the fastest way to normalcy, something he admits he still struggles with more than 20 years after escaping from the fishing villages. A few things remain unresolved. Those things, some of them are so private because it's difficult for, for one to narrate them. What are some of those things that you can't talk about? Well, I can't talk about that, but you're asking me. When you talk about um, issues that are, has to do with sexuality, um, issues that has to do with witnessing of such you know, sexuality. That's what James sees in Thomas, perhaps deep scars and emotional conflict. Joshua is farther along. He joked with me on how he wanted to be a race car driver, specifically a red car he'd drive, he says, the same color as James's car. Joshua even knew how the horn would sound. James is also farther along, to the point he sees his former abusers as potential allies, although many of them have already died. Do you wish they're all alive? All these and Oh, yes, abusive? I wish all of them. Or do you wish they were all dead? No, I wish they were alive. I wish they were alive. I wish they, they, could, they could be alive to help to change the situation. I wish they could be advocates because some of the traffickers at my time now are advocates for us. James's hope is strong, but he is also stoic in some ways. You wouldn't call him jovial, you'd call him driven, ready to sacrifice his job and career again, with only one goal in front of him now. The wrong in society, that has to do with the impoverishment of children, exploitation of children, putting children in slavery and worse forms of child labor, must be corrected. This, we must resolve this issue. Then I can go back to my business. Otherwise, we will still fight and fight until every child receive this justice. Richard Louie, CNN, Sankor, Ghana. You can learn more about James's efforts and his school by visiting their website, challengingheights.org. We'll be back in just a moment.